Last week, we headed northwest out of Melbourne, taking in the rocky climbs of the Pyrenees. The stunning solo art tour, the challenge of the Bronzewing sand dunes, and the respite of the Oyun Oasis, before making our Mallee base at Mildura. This week, the adventure continues as we explore the Murray Sunset, get lost at Woodsy's Gem Shop, taste some local culture at the Sunraysia Cellar Door, and take on one of the remaining hill climbs just an hour southwest of Mildura. Welcome to another episode of Your 4x4 and part two of our five part series exploring Mildura and beyond. Your 4x4 is presented by Oztrack Campers, Trek Hardware 4x4, ARB 4x4 Accessories, Clearview Accessories, Piranha, Nava, Mike Coolman, Cooper and Boss Aluminium. I'm Brett Millington, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Mildura Regional Development. 2020 was a tough year economically for a number of our retail and hospitality businesses. The tourism industry in particular took a significant beating. We've been quite fortunate regionally that uh, agricultural manufacturing has still maintained a significant amount of strength. However, that tourism market is significant. It certainly helps to boost the local retail, hospitality and accommodation sectors. They've all been significantly impacted because of COVID in the vicinity of about $50 million out of our local economy. COVID-19 had a massive impact on our area from a tourism perspective. So shows like this are gonna be fantastic for the area. Bring some people back, open their eyes to what is in and around and let's see if we can get our guys back on top of things and trading like we used to. Oh, well, I'll come in and shake the man of the hour. That was very, very... Brad from our shop in Mildura has absolutely and utterly made pinnacle efforts here to get this trip to happen. He knows everyone. They call him the unofficial mayor of Mildura. He has sorted everything for us along with Visit Mildura and Sarah and all the good work that's been done down there for us to have an epic trip. We're here at one of the newest off-road superstores in Mildura, Monaghan Truck and Trailer Sales, Trek Mildura. Let's go inside and check it out. Had a look round through the store and it's fantastic because we can actually see all the stuff that's stocked at the Trek store is the likes of Yanava and many other bits and pieces from some of the sponsors here on this trip. We were graced with a provided breakfast at Trek Hardware Mildura. They're a fairly new store as well, so it was great to see them up and operational. They were incredible hosts and we left there just full as a boot. After a great breakfast, good coffee, uh, it's time to hit the tracks. G'day Mark, great to have you joining us on day three of the trip. I'm very glad to finally get up here. So you got a little sidekick there in the seat? Yeah, we've done a few of these trips over the years and my boys have always been uh, not quite old enough. But Jack, my oldest, is six now and we thought, why not uh, we'll take him out of school? I think he'll learn more on a trip like this than he will behind the desk for a week. And uh, he loves his four-wheel driving, so he's very rapt to be coming along. Well, hopefully he's not too shy. Can we get young Jack to say hello to everybody? Say hello to women. Say hi, everyone. I brought along my six-year-old son, Jack, my oldest. He's our uh, first trip out here for a, for a big Your 4x4 trip and uh, having a great time, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. And had a little bit of a warning light on the dash this morning. Yeah, it was a little bit unexpected. We had a mill light come up and thought she looked a bit odd. I definitely wasn't out of fuel and it was a fuel-style light, so I quickly flicked through the manual to make sure I wasn't going stir-crazy. As expected, there was a bit of a fuel problem, some dirty fuel and the water into Trek and Dave from Boss gave us a good hand to pull it apart and we went down and picked up a brand new filter to get us on our way, which was great. And pretty lucky that we had Trek Mildura to, to get in there and have a look at it. Absolutely, because otherwise I think I would have probably been spending three to four hours down at the local dealership, no doubt. Whilst Mark fuel issues were being fixed, we jumped next door to Good Deal Tyres and Batteries to get a few problems of our own sorted. With the Iveco having done heavy back-to-back -back trips, 
we urgently needed our rims and beads cleaned and tyres balanced before getting back on the tracks. Drove probably about 45 to an hour. We went to the Murray Sunset National Park. Because of the sandy conditions, we all stopped and aired down. The nice sandy tracks, everything from an oak colour through to a white sand. The beautiful green of the, the Mallee scrub, conifers and so forth in there and the beautiful blue sky. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. With bellies full and all car issues fixed, the crew was looking forward to what challenges the Murray Sunset National Park had on offer. Today we headed out to the Murray Sunset National Park. Haven't been out there for a very, very long time since I was a young fella. We went from Avoca up into Pyrenees, all rock, crayley, rock, step, not a bit of sand in sight. To all of a sudden we're a couple of hours up the road and we're in sand dunes in the Murray Sunset National Park. Beautiful undulating sand tracking. We were really lucky in that we had a bit of a tour guide with us who knew the area. Morning, Jeff. I see we've got a special friend along to help us out today. Yes, I have. Um, Ivan, a mate of mine who's a farmer with a station we'll be visiting later in the trip. With the outing, we actually would have taken a few wrong turns, but he showed us around, certainly knows the area, knows the town, knows the people. Welcome on board, Ivan. Great to have you along and really appreciate the local help. No worries at all, Tom. The beauty about going into those deserts is, as a general rule, they're not challenging tracks, it's just beautiful sceneries. A little bit dusty, nice tight tracks, a lot of sand. So, Maria, is this your first time to the Murray Sunset National Park? Definitely, and we are loving it. Especially all this dust. We can't see you. So, Dave, what's your advice for convoys travelling in dust? UHFs are important, you know, making sure you keep a safe distance, keep your lights on. One of the great things we were asked with a couple of newbies on the trip, try not to go out there on your own, take your friend with you in their car, have a bit of fun together. It can be extremely dusty. You don't have to go far off the beaten track to get confused and lost. After a long morning of mud, dust and sand, we put up on the edge of an old lake bed for a bite to eat and a breather before facing a little challenge I had in store. Shortly after lunch, we could see a nice sand dune not too far away and we headed in that direction. There was this big sand hill climb. It started off as reasonably easy. Simon kept talking about this hill climb we were going to tackle all day long, so we're all pretty excited to get out there and give it a go. Especially in the sand. I don't reckon any car they're going to make it up without getting pulled. So we sent Simon up first because we figure we've just got to allow for him, give him the easy one. Centre diff lock on. Flat to the floor. Third gear, low range. Yeah, pushing through, it's looking good. <laughs> All the way to the top. Woo! The sand hill we climbed, I had no issue at all getting up there. Only being the second car, I was certainly down low pressure. I had 18 pounds. Just kept in first gear, high range, disabled the traction control. Very, very fortunate on the big hill climb up the first sand dune. I saw Simon go up and see that it was quite firm under spot. I was third in the queue, so I knew it was going to be hard and compact. The Raptor went up, that was reasonably easy for it, just selecting all the right bits and pieces on the dash and the right buttons, and that just tracked it its way up there. And then what everyone was waiting around to see, more or less, was the big six by six. Went up awesomely, made some awesome sounds going up there. Like it always does. Had it in low range and turned the traction control off, but because I was spinning so hard up the top, it just started cutting the power out a bit. 
Here we go, on the way down. With limited space at the top of the hill and three more vehicles still to come, we made some room and prepared for a recovery, just in case. We basically just tried to tag team, so I drove one day, Charlie drove another day, both trying to get a feel for the Prado and its new upgrades. There was a really great sandy hill climb that we went up. It was a bit of a challenge. I had my tyres at 18 PSI and just watching the other guys who didn't drop their tyres as much, I took a bit of insurance and I dropped mine to 16 PSI. This gave me a better footprint. It really had softened up a lot. Graham, when you're ready, feel free to come on up. Yeah, look, I'm just turning the aircon, the fan off the fridge, turning everything off, mate. I need every horse I can get to. Got a good run in it, kept the momentum up. I was pleasantly surprised that I got up first go, considering a couple of goes the day before in one of the previous sand dunes we went up. Always learning, and one of the things certainly picked up on this trip is making sure you keep up momentum. You definitely have to watch your momentum and maintain your momentum. There's a section, particularly at the top of the hill, where you think you're getting to the crest of the hill and then you back off, and that's where you lose that momentum and the weight of the vehicle will dig into the sand. I was wondering a little bit earlier on with a few people chopping it up that it might have got worse and worse, but, but we basically just figured that the 79 in our single caps is pretty light. I actually just chucked it into low range three and just pushed it. Those things have plenty of grunt, really nice amount of power getting through and just didn't really show any signs of concern, did it? We just went straight up. We even flew over holes. We even flew over some holes, fantastic. <laughs> Most of us went up successfully. The only thing we were a little bit concerned about was as each vehicle went up, it loosened up the sand a little bit. And so the first climb we did was quite solid. And then every vehicle that went up after that, it just started getting softer. The heat started coming into play. The boys were trying to make it harder for everyone else. So they'd be braking as they were coming down, trying to bring in all the soft sand. Which unfortunately, Brad from Mildura took him five attempts. Can you believe it? Five attempts. So all the guys ran up there, no problem at all. I did hear some whispers that they were touching the brakes on the way down, digging it up for me. Well, we had a crack in a fairly standard Ford Ranger, and I think we did a great job almost to the top, but just couldn't quite get there. Go, 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 go. Issues you have with your standard vehicles is your traction control and things like that. Well, I'm being recovered. Um, I just don't think I'm sitting up high enough to get through those ruts, so yeah, a bit of a challenge, but that's okay. We got in the car, let the tyre pressure down a bit lower, put his rear diff lock in, bang, straight up at one go, he was wrapped. It's the most frightening experience of my life. I prayed to everyone I believed in. I tried absolutely everything to get the car going faster. I was even putting my feet through the floor, but we did it. Whilst the tracks of the Murray Sunset were exhausting, back in town, an adventure of a different nature had us all ready for a navigational challenge and some local treasure. Now, what a little spot this is. You walk in, for me as a bloke, biggest jewellery shop I've ever been in, I got quite scared. I didn't see any engagement rings, which is lucky for me. It was stunning to walk in. The crystals were the first thing that took my eye. Beautiful big bog that was covered in crystals, and that to me is amazing. For those people that are really into their crystals and stones, he had an amazing collection. He'd actually travelled all around the world. It was great to meet Chris, the owner. His dad was there, who gave us the full history of how he started off from grape farming and slowly converted over to the current form, which is specialising in gemstones from around the world. It started off years ago as Sunraysia Lapidary Supply, so we were more into supplying rough stones, castings and that to clubs. Then it grew more into the jewellery side of it. We headed off to the maze, and I think we looked at this maze, the start was there, the finish was there, literally 10 metres apart, and I think everybody thought to have this all done and dusted in a short space of time. So we're frantically trying to find which gate goes to where, because once you went through that gate, you can't go back. Oh, we did go back to help Jake, because we thought that he needed some assistance, didn't we? Yeah, he was like, where are we going, where are we going? Yeah, typical Jake, always needs help. How do you think you're progressing so far? Do you reckon you're winning? I've got no idea. I, I didn't know it was a race. I thought we just got to get out. Is it a race? Are 
you lost? Very, very lost. Wrong way. <laughs> which is the short? Which is the shortest way? And how much is it going to cost? How beautiful are the colours here? The sand, the trees, that blue sky. There was sections of old lake beds, and also I believe one section of it was a disused airstrip. Anyone that doesn't appreciate the Mallee scrub and being out here in this terrain, something. Hey Ivan, I dare say no one's been through here with a bulldozer recently. I suspect no one's been through here for quite a while. There's been a few motorbikes, I'd say. Isolation of it all, really. And no phone service. Yeah, it's oh, good, isn't it? Best Very thing cool, I've had. It's been lovely. Mike, you've done a stack of trips through this area, but these have been some new tracks for you. Yeah, nice, simple, easy tracks, really. I've just put a whole new ride pro suspension in the car, put the new upper control arms from Piran in, and what a dream it was. was incredibly undulating, lots of peaks and troughs. There was a few sections where there was a bit of the whoopties. How's the 6x6 handy, these sorts of undulations? It's doing really well. The airbag suspension and remote res shocks, it soaks everything up. And with the longer wheelbase, the track's a bit tight. It actually handles the tight stuff quite well when you're on the dirt. <laughs> What do you think of the track itself, Charlie? Surprised at how much of a difference 24 pound and no diff lock made to 18 pound and diff lock going up that hill. It's huge, isn't it? I mean, that's what those traction aids are for. It was really good to give my car a workout. I didn't expect it to perform as well as it actually did, keeping up with all the other guys. Once again, I reckon the Raptor's in its element on this track. I really am very pleased with it, Simon. And this track we're on now with these undulations, it'd just lap it all up, wouldn't it? It is very comfortable, it just sort of wallows along. And then the track started to get a little bit smoother, a little bit more fast paced. We were able to pick it up a little bit, making our way back to the blacktop. Everyone had a bit of fun on those, they were big, nice sweeping bends. How's the old Hilux handling this track? Yeah, look, I'm done and power, done and luxury, done with all the creature comforts, but compensated by great driver skill. I don't have all the advanced multi-setting suspension, the DP51 and the Fox suspension. He's basically calling everyone else soft, aren't you, Grant? I, I'm reading between the lines there. Oh, well, Jake, I should have given you more credit. I didn't think you'd spot that one, though. No, I'm picking up what you put down, Grant. Well played. Had a ball of a time, and then before you knew it, we were back on the bitumen. So we were up here for three days, and we're swapping over today for Lisa and Andreas. Now taking over for the rest of the trip. Great to be here again. With the new Mike Coleman crew in tow, we aired up and made our way back to Mildura for a refreshing surprise. Welcome to the Sunrisea Cellar Door. We represent the 22 wine producers from the Murray-Darling region of Australia. So our region here produces around about 30% of all Australia's wine. I'm big into my wines and really love my Margaret Rivers and, and wines out of the Barossa Valley and didn't realise just how much wine actually came out of this region here. 70% of the wine comes out of this area between the Riverland, Mildura and Griffith. There's 250 wines and every one of those wines is available for taste here. The pleasing thing was they've really contributed to being an outlet for the local wineries in this district. Highly recommend anyone within the region or those coming up to visit to go and have a look at that. These regional communities need some assistance after all the lockdowns and so forth for the last 12 months. If I've got to buy a couple of bottles of grog to help them out, well, unfortunately, I must do that. One of the other things that we all did was watch your 4x4 on TV together on 7 Mate at 11.30 on Saturdays. Over wine. <laughs> With wine and cheese. After a full day on the tracks, the crew enjoyed a relaxing afternoon together, taking in some of the best food and wine the region has to offer. Join us next week as we continue exploring Mildura and its surrounds. You don't want to miss it.